Hello guys. This is Kathy with King Cage Special Creations going live today on our West Virginia Wednesday. It's been a rocky week. We had to postpone our Facebook Live, which we will be doing next tomorrow night um, to uh, catch up. And then we'll be back on schedule if all things goes well. Hello. How are you guys? I see you're popped in. Let me refresh my page to see if I can get me in here. How are you? Hi, Melissa. Hey, Mandy. How you doing today, baby? Hey, Becky. Glad to see you all here. Yep, I'm in. Yay. So now I can see your comments. I'm not planning on putting the screen down today. My craft is a little bit more easier. Good, Mandy. I'm glad to hear that, baby. Glad to hear it. Maybe all things will stay well this time. So, um, uh, hi, Janet. How are you? Talked to you earlier this morning, but I'm glad to see you. So, this is, this is just what we're going to do today is I'm going to talk about kind of a, a winter survival kit if you're stuck out on the road, so you get out somewhere and you slide into the ditch and you can't get out and have a little bit of a time getting, or you're caught out basically out in a big snowstorm where you can't get home for an hour or so. Just things that you can have that, that'll help you out, you know, whenever you're out there doing stuff. I mean... Me, personally, I don't know anything about getting out of a ditch, so I, I don't know the um, concept. I would think that a four-wheel drive would help you, but, you know, you see a lot of four-wheel drives stranded on the road. Hi, Patricia. Glad you stopped in. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go over the list of stuff that I've got ready to go and going to put in my little survival kit to put in our van so that, you know, you never know. I mean, we make so many trips to Morgantown and stuff. You might get in an accident on the uh, side of the road that you weren't involved in, but you're stuck in the traffic and it could be like it was up on... Let me turn, let me turn down my sound. Did everything else but that. If I can find my mouse here. I do all my editing, so I have to have my sound up. I forgot to take it down. <laughs> Everything I got to fall in. Well, the first thing that I feel like you should have is a phone charger. Just in case you're out there, you're stuck for a while, and you need to make a phone call. Me, if I'm stuck for a while, I'm always on my game on my phone, so it's always a good idea to have your charger uh, with a with a car charger addition to it or if your vehicle is set up uh, like Timmy's is to um, do it. I'm going to push y'all down. To put y'all down just a little farther. Sorry about the jerkiness. Oh, that's better. Hey, Vanna. So just always remember to keep you an extra one, not the one you charge, use to charge your phone in a house with because you'll forget it either in the car or you'll fit it, get it at home all the time. Put this one in your car just for an emergency situation. That way you can call somebody, one of your family members, and say, hey, I'm running late, I'm stuck in traffic, they're clearing the roads or whatever, so that everybody knows where you're at. It's important in any emergency situation that your family knows exactly where you are. That's, that's, um, important to me, and I'm sure it's important to any of your family members. Second thing to have is a flashlight. Just just a flashlight so that you can see if it's when if it's nighttime, you can see what you're find, trying to find in your car. If you have to change a tire or you have to get out, because anytime you're out and you're running your car, hey, Dreamer. You're running your car to stay warm. Make sure, especially if you're in a snowstorm, 
that there is no snow buildup around the tailpipe of, pipe of your car. And always, if you're um, having to run it, crack your window just a little bit in order to make sure there's a good flow of air so that the carbon monoxide don't build up or carbon, whichever it is, don't build up in your car. Um, in addition to a battery or a flashlight, make sure you know what type batteries your flashlight takes and put you an extra set to reset it. Some take double A's, some take triple A's. Back in the day, they took C's and D's. I doubt you see too many of those anymore. Some of them have 9-volt batteries. So, I mean, uh, whatever those big square ones are. So, uh, just make sure that you have whatever flashlight you have in your kit, you have batteries. So, that all that stuff is good. Man. Okay. So, the next thing on the list is put you a tin can. This is a um, big, I think pineapple juice came in this, if I'm not mistaken. When I was doing my cleaning, Oh, hi, Cruzy. Yeah, Gigi, Gigi wants to see you sometime soon. These uh, big cans are the best because they're more stable. If you're setting them on your surface, they won't wiggle around as much as a smaller can would. I've got this great big pillar candle, but you could use taper candles. Just, you know... Kind of light the end, let the the uh, wax drip down in the bottom of your can. Set your candle down in there so it'll be good and sturdy. But this will do twofold. One, it will give you light inside your vehicle, so you don't have to keep your car running all the time or your flashlight running all the time. It will throw out a moderate amount of heat to maintain at least enough that you're not freezing all the time in between you running your car. They say to run it for about 10 minutes at a clip and turn it off so that you're not building up too much CO2 in there so that you're not getting sick or whatever. So I would suggest, I did not do that because I didn't have time this morning, but I would suggest along this top area, filling you some holes so the smoke and the fumes could come out because in the process of doing this, you can take a pie pan and set it on the top of it. And now you have a little stove to heat you up, you know, with the secondary little small can, heat you up some water to make you a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or whatever. You know, heat you up something to put in you, something something to eat. Just something warm to put your hands around. I know that's important to me is keep my hands warm. So whenever you're doing stuff like that, just when you're throwing out your stuff, keep one little can and a pie pan. Everybody gets a pumpkin pie or something at Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever. And just keep it like that. And that makes you a nice little stove to heat you up something on. So. Any questions? I'm just trying to make sure I get all the information that I could have been watching this stuff all morning long. Trying to make sure that all the information that I've given you is correct. And... Hopefully, everybody can, um, yes, you sure could. You could use that to melt you some water if you're just completely out of water altogether. Just melt you some water, and that way you can have that in, in a high crystal, uh, an emergency situation. Okay, and of course, if you're going to have a candle, you need to have... Matches or a lighter, whichever your choice is. They say it's a good idea to have one of each or two of each, just so that you make sure if one of them doesn't work, say these get wet or damp or whatever while you're out in the car, you can then have the lighter as a backup. Just always make sure that you keep one or the other in your thing to light your candle with. Next thing in line is a blanket. I just have this little one. It would be better if you had a big one, but it would also require a lot of space in your vehicle um, to do it. So this little small one will keep off the 
horrible cold, just wrap it around you and stay a little bit warmer while you're waiting on the traffic to clear up or whatever. So, try to keep your blanket in tow. And some people just have those in there. If you're going to um, be out, you know you're going to be traveling and there's a possibility of a snowstorm coming in, put you an extra thing of clothes in your car. Layer, layer, layer. That's what everybody says. Don't just think that you, your clothes and you putting on a heavier jacket is going to help the situation. While it will make you warmer, it will not keep you keep the heat inside your body. They say to make sure you do layers, like your underclothes, your a t-shirt, a, 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 a long john shirt or a sweatshirt, uh, then a jacket, and then if you have to, then the heavy jacket, just to keep you warm. Depends on how long you're out there, of course. Here in West Virginia, we don't have to stay out too long, because generally we don't go out too much if it's snowing, but if you have to get to work, and I've had to do that on more than one occasion, I've had to go... From here, walk from a, from where I live up to town, and then the people at the park would come and get me there. Well, from here to there is a very, very dangerous trek. Thinking about back on it, I should have never done that, either walking back home from work or walking to work, because not only was I putting myself in danger of a car sliding into, but putting the person that's behind that car scared to death that they're going to slide into me. So unless you have to be out in, in bad weather walking, it's better that you don't, especially if you're on a hillside because, hey Stevie, because it's, it's scary on both sides of the equation. You don't want to be slid down and get hurt. And the person that's driving on the road beside you doesn't want to slide into you. So just always keep that in mind. If you have to get out and walk, make sure you're a way distance away from the side of the road. Um, this morning, I know my sister fell a, couple, a year or so ago on some black ice on her sidewalk. And this morning, I understand exactly how she did that because I walked out to my she shed. And right on the top of the, this porch that we have, that the whole top of that porch had a, I mean, the barest little skip of ice. You could not see it. It was not visible. You, but when you stepped on it, my gummies, you felt it. I held on to everything that I could get my fingers on to get back to the end of those steps and get back down and get back in the house. I was like, what on earth? And then I realized it was just a little tiny sliver of, of black ice on there. So that's how come people have so much trouble when they're out on the road. And they think the road is clear because it's still black. It's black top, so it's black. No. Even the smallest, tiniest amount of ice will cause you to go everywhere. Hey, hey, Susie. Thanks for watching. So the next thing in line I have is just a little container. You don't even have to put these in a container. I'm going to put them inside of a bigger container, so I wanted to keep them as clean as possible. But you don't have to do that. You put them in a plastic bag, paper bag, a baggie, whatever that will fit in the area that you want. First thing I, I wanted to have was an extra pair of dry gloves. If you're out you're in the wintertime, sometimes you're wearing gloves. Well, but they might get wet. There's two ways to do that. Of course, you have your extra pair. But if you take a pair of plastic gloves, if you have to be out in the snow messing with the snow at all, put you a pair of plastic gloves on first. That way, the, although the cold will get to your hands, the wet won't. So then you can have an opportunity to do what you have to do without getting your hands soaking wet and chapped and all that other stuff. Next thing is a toboggan. The reason they say to have a toboggan is because your head, head, heat, excuse me, your heat escapes through your head so that whenever you're out there, if you're in the cold, always wear some kind of a head covering. That's why back in the day, the ladies always wore head scarves because they kept their hair, uh, head warm and dry. So if you just put you on a little toboggan, it'll keep the most of the heat from escaping from your head. And finally, a scarf. This is the one out of my snowman kit, but you'll see that tomorrow. But I wanted to use it for today. And you just grab it. You can put it around your neck. Put it up over your face. 
it just becomes a really a good addition to have in your car. Now, these are not things that you have in your house. These are extra things that you put in your car because you don't want to have to remember every time you walk out that door to grab that little to-go bag. Just put it in your car and leave it there. That, that's the important thing. Once it's in there, if something happens and you're out there, say you have a flat tire or your car runs out of gas or anything that can strand you on the side of the road, you know you're prepared. Waiting on the people to come in, you're pre prepared to face that situation with the strongness that you're going to not have any problems or not have as many problems. Okay, our next thing, just to keep in there, is just some regular snacks. I have a thing of applesauce, a couple of things of raisins, a couple of things of, of um, graham crackers, just something to snack on. Because I don't know about you guys, but when I get nervous, I want to eat. So if I'm sitting on the side of the road, not knowing what could happen or when somebody's going to come help me or whatever, I'm going to want to eat. Now, you don't have to because, as everybody knows, that you need to drink water first. That's your most important thing. And you will not croak if you go two hours without a meal. But if the rest of us that are really super nervous eaters, this is just a comfort zone. This just helps us to calm down and stay that way. So if you have a little bit of food in your in your thing that you can grab out and just snack around on a little bit here, there, and yonder, then your main thing is to stay as even keel as you can. This coming from the most nervous Nelly that they ever was. But I have learned over the course of my time that if you can calm yourself down, you can keep the situation more manageable and more doable. Uh, I'm still working on it, guys, but I'm getting there. The next thing... Sorry about that, guys. I got a spam risk coming in. Get him off the screen. Hi, Julie. How are you? Next thing is water. Now, the amount of water that you need to keep in your car is conditional on how many people you're going to have in your car. Um, when you drink it, it goes sparingly. I seen a guy today. I'm not sure how I'd have to, tr how to, I would have to test this before I would actually say, yes, this works. But he said that if you're out in the middle, somewhere broke down, and you, you drank all the water that you have, but there's a stream nearby that's clean and clear, just fill your thing back up and to keep you one of those little tiny bottles of bleach in there. And for a quart size bottle, which this is not a quart size, but for a quart size bottle of water, two drops, two drops of bleach in it and let it sit for a little bit and it will kill all the germs in it and the water will be fit for you to drink. Now, I have not tried that. I just seen that this morning, but I am going to try it because you never know. These crazy times we got today. Who knows when that's going to be the very most important information anybody has. Okay. Um, my first aid kit is next. I've got in this first aid kit, I've got a mask. Who doesn't think that everybody has to have a mask? Then I have some hand sanitizer because if you're out there and you have to go to the bathroom, you want something, you know, just because back in the day we didn't care, but back because we've come, they've come out with hand sanitizer, everybody cares about whether you wash your hands after you go to the bathroom. So just a little hand sanitizer will work. Um, I have some antiseptic spray. Got these, um... I think I got these at Pick and Pay down in Charleston, but I got several cans of them, so that is a good thing to have. I do not have band-aids, which I will add to this, but in in that thinking that way, I've got some peroxide to spray on something if you get a little cut, some antibiotics to put on top of it. Hi, Tim. Glad you made it, buddy. And some um, band-aids just covered up with. 
in lieu of band-aids for me right now i have just a little piece of gauze stuff and some tape my mother loved this tape she was a nurse for a lot of years so she really liked that tape and it, it will in work in for a band-aid in an emergency situation just to cover it up so it doesn't get infected and then of course we got our little smelling salt thing that you break open in case something happens and somebody passes out on you and then I have a couple little things of aspirin Ibuprofen is better to put in it, but aspirin is good in case some of you think somebody's having a heart attack or a stroke or something. They can take an aspirin. It's not medical advice, people. Not medical advice. Just something that I practiced when I took my stroke. I feel like it helped me. I got up and took me a 325-milligram uh, um, aspirin, and I think that helped me to get a lesser degree of what it was. So I was six weeks in recovery instead of could have been six months or six years. You never know. It just depends. Um, but the aspirin, uh, ibuprofen will do if you, uh, like, twist your ankle or something and it's swelling. Ibuprofen is really good for that. Tylenol is really good if you're carrying a fever. You know, they're all different pain relievers, so they'll all do their form of pain. But then they have a little something-something in it that does... Like I said, Tylenol for fever, ibuprofen for swelling, and aspirin just to thin your blood a little bit so you don't have too much issues. But that is my first aid kit that I have. Um, I also have one of these uh, sterile uh, pieces of, for a bigger wound. So you can put that in there. Just a little something. Basically, to make you feel like you're doing something, that you're accomplishing something, that you're helping somebody. Because you just never know in, the, in any instance when that's going to be the very thing that you need. Um, and kitty litter. Kitty litter is supposed to be good for putting under your tires if you're stuck. That can help you get some traction to get out. I've not had to do that because I call somebody. But in case you're out there and you're you're really desperate, just have a little bit in your in your car. It's also good for my next su suggestion. Well, for a suggestion in a minute, but on my next list is tools. I don't have a toolbox. I might have one in the van. I've not looked. Tim even putting one up. Yeah, I always keep a lighter in the in the can. That would oh yeah, that would be good if you just put it down in the can. That would be really good, Stevie. Thanks. <laughs> this is just a little box. It's a little ammo box, but it would make a good little toolbox just to put a set of pliers, screwdriver, um, a wrench, maybe even a small socket set down in, just so that you could help if um you know, ha have it there to do little light jobs with. Make sure your uh, spare tire is up. Make sure that your uh, jack is in place so that you can get to those things easy in case you have a, a flat tire or something. Can a fix, fix a flat uh, would be good in an emergency situation. I heard, also heard from somebody today, they always talk about these run flat tires. They said they're still only good for 50 miles. That's to get you from where you had had the hole in the tire to wherever it is. I thought they were just they if they got a hole in them they just keep running, but they say you're supposed still supposed to get them fixed. So now I have some. If say you have an electrical issue, they say to keep some black tape and some duct tape. The duct tape. He used the duct tape. We was in a small little accident on whether he hit something on the side of the road or what. But his fender was coming off. He took the duct tape and duct taped the fender in, onto the car until he could get home to get it fixed. I thought that was a neat idea. And Kimmy always says that's, that's 55 mile an hour tape. So it would hold it on as long as you wasn't going too fast. Um... And then the, the last thing that goes with two things that we were talking about. One was the bleach and one was the kitty litter. And that 
is if you're on the side of the road, especially on 95 or one of those big roads that has a ton of traffic on it, you may not get, or the snow's so deep you can't do anything or icy or whatever, you may not be able to get out of the car to go to the bathroom. Or if you do, you might not want to go sit down on the snow. So they suggested a bucket. Of course, now he suggested a um, big five-gallon bucket, but most people can't put that in a car. But this would this would suffice. He also suggested putting a, a trash bag or a grocery bag or something down in it. When you do your business, then you just take that and you, you uh, put it somewhere secure till you get to a place where you can dispose of it. Now, hopefully we don't have it, but you know... I can't drive an hour without having to find a bathroom, so that's a pretty useful information to me. Always keep your toilet paper down inside your little bucket and wipes if you need them. Wipe your hands off or whatever. Those can all be kept together. So that is the thing for the car. I also wanted to... Um, Electrical tape and paper towel in a pinch. For yes, it is because Timmy has always used put a little piece of something around a finger that he cut and just put electrical tape around it. He swears it, it makes it uh, heal faster. And I've seen him pretty nasty cuts and he doesn't take very long to heal. So I guess it does work. And I've seen other mechanics do it. So that must be a mechanic... Uh, first aid kit that they keep in gear. So, that would be pretty cool. So, what, what we're going to do now is we're going to switch things just a little bit. And I'm going to give you some ideas of things to keep in your house. Handy in your house. Not just because everybody probably has every one of these items in their house. They just may not be at, at a spot that they could find them immediately. So, as the first thing, when your power goes out, and say it's the middle of the night, your power's out, and you're getting, you know, you need to get up and do something, always have, first have a flashlight right beside where you're sitting, or right beside where you're sleeping. Then you can get that flat, or your phone, your phone makes a good flashlight, as long as it's, it's uh, powered up. Use that to find your candles and your matches. Preferably, you have kept them in a spot in an area where you can just automatically traipse through the dark, right to them, get them, and light them up. Two things is going to happen with that that I found in this house. One, if you if I take three of those big candles and, and situate them here in the dining room and living room, it will keep the, the temperature from being horribly bad that you can't stand to be in the room with it. Um, so if the, if the power is out where your furnace don't work and everything else, hey Andy, then just make sure that you, uh, you know, you just have your candles ready anywhere from the little taper candles to the, to the, uh, pillar candles to the, uh, tea, tea light candles, all those, all those will work. Just set them around and the, and the heat off of that. It will not, if it's sub-zero weather, it is not going to warm your house. <laughs> but if it's, say, 30 or 40 degrees, it will help to moderate the temperature a little bit. Um, and if nothing else, you can see the pretty light. And it will get, you know, keep you from having to run all your batteries dead in your flashlight. Put one in your bathroom so that you never leave them unattended. But put them in a secure location. And if you got cats, make sure it's a secure location. Because <laughs> they, they like to jump on everything. Um, then again, I'm back to the warm layers of clothes. If you know the power is going to be off, like we had power go off one winter when we had a 38-inch snowstorm. It's out for 10 days. Instead of putting one layer of heavy clothes on, put several layers of thin clothes on. And that way you'll keep your body heat in better. It's easier to take off a thinner layer of clothes than it is to try to put extra, you know, uh, thinking that extra heavy coat's going to keep you warm. 
your warm blankets. They say wool is the best. A lot of people don't tolerate wool very well. But if you have a good heavy-duty blanket that folds down over your body, not one of those um, plush-type uh, blankets because they just stick out. You, you, they're warm. They're beautiful. They're soft. They're gorgeous. But even if you put them on your bed and you lay down in them, it, they don't conform to your body. So get you a blanket that you just save for when the power is out and it's cold that will conform down over your body. You'll Trust me, when you find that blanket, Mandy had one, we, she stayed down here that night, that big green one. She said that thing kept her warm. So if you find one that just conforms down over your body, then you'll see that that makes a big difference. Or it does to me. Um, water is important. Uh, if your power is out, your water is probably still running. But there's a good possibility if the water is out for several days, they're going to have you to boil your water. So it's better off if you go ahead and start boiling you some water and put it back so you already know it's clean and ready to use. Your food, of course, when the power is out, you have limited uh, things to cook. Yeah, that green black was pretty cool, isn't it, sis? You, uh, you have limited ways of cooking. You could use the tin can with the pillar uh, candle in it. The, you know, the same thing you would use in your car. Just put it on top of the thing and set you a cup of water or a can on top of the heat. It, it will take a long time, but eventually it will warm up. Another alternative that Timmy likes to use when our power goes out, if it's out for an extended period of time, is um, a barbecue grill. You cannot use the barbecue grill in the house, but on your, on your outside, on your little uh, patio or something, just set your barbecue grill up. If, if you've got propane or, or if you've got charcoal, just light it up. It will be a great source, a way to heat up soups and fix eggs and, you know, stuff like that. You won't be able to do heavy-duty cooking, but you'll be able to do light-duty cooking. A lot of people have a generator, so that takes the, the whole thing um, out, of, out of the equation. Some people have a heater inside their house that burns wood or coal. That's a really good way to cook. Just put your pot of beans on, let them babies cook all day. Oh, my gosh, I'm making myself hungry. But... Um, Make sure that your phone is charged up, preferably before you go to bed at night. Put it on charge. But if, um, I say as I don't ever get mine charged up. If not, make sure you have a car charger for your car or the spot. Go out there and plug it in and let it charge up to get you enough that if an emergency come up, and heaven forbid that it would, but if one would come up, you could call and let them know. Oh, speaking of calling, if your power is out, always call, have the number for the, the emergency number for the power company ready and call that. My sister's husband worked for the power company for a long time and she told me this. Make sure you call it in because although, like I live on one road that has a lot of houses on it. Well, if I don't call in and let them know that my, my power's out or check on it at least, um, they might turn all the power on on the rest of the houses and it still be out at mine. So they want to be able to check to make sure everybody's power is on because yours might have a different issue than what the main power out outage problem was. So always make sure you call them to let them know your personal power is out. And if everybody else has come back on and yours is still out, don't sit around thinking, well, mine will come in in a minute. Call them back and tell them yours is still out. Um, and, and the last thing I'm going to say on this whole thing is if your power is out, if it just goes out for an hour or two, just send a text message to somebody in your family to let them know that your power is out so that they can know in case they want to come and check on you or, you know, bring you something in to eat or whatever. They will already know that your power is out. If, like, I've got one that lives an hour, half hour away, one that lives an hour away, and one that lives um, two hours away. 
they're not going to know when when power goes out right here in my little community. Their their power might be doing fine. Heavens, I can have power out right here at this house, and a little house on our same property will have power. So I mean, and sometimes it works that way. Sometimes it doesn't. But always make sure you let them know. So, uh, do you have any any things to add to what I've said? Has this information been any any help to you to find out stuff that that might be helpful to keep in your car or keep handy? And the key word is handy because. While a lot of people might have their house so organized that they could go straight to whatever it is, that is not mine and that is not a few other ones uh, that I know of. So if you just, the important things that you need, candles, lighters, matches, charcoal charcoal, or propane for your, your barbecue grill if you need it, uh, just things like that, it's really, really, really important. Yeah, I need to do that, Mandy. I really, really need to make sure my phone is plugged in every evening. Um, I need to put the charger by my bed. That way I can do it. And then, if, well, sometimes I like to play a game in the bed before I get to sleep or whatever. Um, but it's really important to make sure because nowadays very few people have a house phone. Most everybody has cell phones. Cell phones have to be charged. So, well, thank you, Janet. I, I've, I've really wanted to do this because we have not had a winter this year so far, which means we very well could have a very, hi, Edwina, we very well could, could have a really nasty February when it gets here. So, I'm just wanting to give this little information ahead of time so everybody can get started on their little bag to throw in their car. And a little little area. You can pick out a little, what, foot area in your house and set your candles, your lighter, your matches, everything all together. Oh, well, but yeah, battery-operated light. But you still, Beck, you still need to make sure that you keep your batteries close just in case when you get ready to use it that battery operated light might be dead. So always make sure that your batteries are in, a, it doesn't have to be with your light, it has to be in a location where you know where it is. Because in a house that's dark, everything switches up on you. You think, you know exactly where you're going and when you walked across the floor before you went to bed, there was nothing in the way so you're not going to trip over it. And if a dad going, if the cat or the dog hasn't drug something right in the middle of your way that you kick and you're wondering what in the world is in the floor. So a, a flashlight, your light on your phone, whatever, will help you to get from point A to point B safely. Once you get there, don't rely on the batteries to these things. Rely on a good old-fashioned candle because that will light up a lot of area when it's dark. And then you can see to get around without having to worry so much about it. So, <laughs> not my cat, my twin grandsons. That, that, I can agree with that, Beck. I can agree with that. Grandsons will get everything. How often should you check your battery success? Well, um, I have a, it's a battery box um, that I got at Treasure Hunt. And inside that battery box has a little battery tester. So I, before I pull the batteries out of that thing to use them, I always check to see how much life is in them. And another thing that Julie taught me a long time ago is if you've got a something that has regular batteries in it, like a flashlight or something, and you really don't have any other one, take those batteries out, put them in your hand, and rub them. Rub. I do it all the time for the remote on my YouTube when I'm too lazy to get up and go get the new batteries. I'll just rub them, rub them, rub them real hard till your hand gets warm and that battery will get charged out of you. You can put it back in. You may not have 10 minutes worth of charge, but that 10 minutes will help you find your batteries. So, 
I would check batteries if you, especially if you have a little battery tester, man. I would check batteries at least every six months to see if they are. They don't last that long in this house, so by six months, I've done bought batteries three times. But definitely, definitely, definitely check. And make sure when you take the old batteries out, you dispose of them immediately, safely and immediately, because they will get intermixed with the new batteries. If somebody comes in and they're opening up the remote to your your uh, TV set and they pull those batteries out, they're just going to stick them where the other ones are. They're not, they're not thinking. It's not they're doing it on meanness. They're just not thinking. They want to put their new ones in and get back to their TV set. But you really need to make sure that you get in the habit of throwing, probably go on to the trash can and throw those batteries away before you go into wherever your batteries are at and put new batteries in. That would be my suggestion because without the battery tester, I wouldn't have no idea how you'd know. I really wouldn't. I guess if you put them in and they don't work, you'll know they're bad ones. But you could have one, like I had took two batteries out and checked them. One was completely dead and one was still about half full. So they all don't, maybe don't go down at the same time, or maybe their one was newer than the other one when I put them into the remote. I'm not sure. So I put that half battery back in and the fresh battery, and it works just fine. But like I said, if you don't have a battery tester, I really don't know. But I can tell you this much, Mandy, if I ever find those battery boxes again, you and Christy will go get one for Christmas. <laughs> I ain't found them yet, but I'm going to get you one because they are the best thing. Not only can you store your batteries in a location where you know where they are, but you can test them to make sure that they're good before you put them in. Well, you save yourself a lot of time. All right, guys. Well, it looks like I have been, oh, 40 minutes. Thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging in. I really appreciate it. I really, really do. If you found something that you like on this video... I'm going to be downloading it from Facebook and put it up on YouTube. I have all of my West Virginia Wednesdays for anybody that's missed them in a playlist on YouTube. So if you want to watch them back to back, that would be absolutely awesome. But if you uh, see something or find out something or whatever, just leave a comment later. I will keep reading them over and over again. So, if I find any new comments, I'll respond to as many as I can. Uh, it's a good way to keep up, keep me involved with your all's lives and you all involved with mine. And I really greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Uh, we are at 202 members now. So, thank you all for all the support that you give me and all the love that you give me. And I am going to sign off. You all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.